Layers of Fear 2 released in 2019 elsewhere and was developed by Bloober Team. It's a psychological horror game and followed on from its predecessor Layers of Fear, which itself arrived on the Switch via a Legacy Edition in 2018. Its sequel is now about to appear on the Switch 2. Is it a terrifying experience or just a scary port? Well, I'm Glenn Bolger. Thank you to the publishing team for the review code. And now, let's find out. Story-wise, you play as a Hollywood actor who accepts the call from an enigmatic director to take on a lead role in a film shot aboard an ocean liner. Things are not as they seem and very quickly begin to unravel as the journey begins. So in terms of gameplay and much like its predecessor, Layers of Fear 2 is a psychological horror experience played in the first person. You move through the ocean liner, exploring your surroundings and making your way through a number of rooms, delving deeper into the depths of the vessel. It would best be described as a horror-themed walking simulator with the story playing out as you enter certain rooms via set pieces and these are most certainly creepy and do set the tone very well. As well as this there are a number of items for you to find and examine, some of which are necessary for progression such as keys, some of which fill in plot points and expand the story whilst others just help to build the world you inhabit. As well as items allowing you to progress, there are times when a puzzle may need to be solved or the combination to a lock found, and whilst never overly taxing, they do help to mix up the gameplay. Then you have particular sections where a little more action is introduced. Whilst we are never talking about survival horror levels of action, it may see you needing to avoid detection by spotlights or crouching out the way of bursts of fire, and also new for this sequel is the addition of creatures that will pursue you. These moments occur whenever a creature manifests in front of you and you will need to run, making your way through the rooms and doorways, possibly ducking into smaller areas or having to bolt doors behind you. If you are caught, you will be killed and must begin again at the last auto save point, which is never too far away. Whilst not being terrible, these sections did feel like the weakest part of the game for me. The main reason for this is the control scheme, which we'll touch on now. You move with the left stick, moving the camera with the right stick and opening doors by pressing and holding ZR on the door handle or bolt for example and then moving the right stick towards or away from yourself. It's a control scheme that is used in some first person games, especially the slower walking simulators. However, when being chased, the slow movement makes turning and running quite difficult. The running is handled by holding down L and feels slow and not intense enough. It's almost as if you are moving on a travelator, and the act of opening doors and bolts as described can lead to frustration when ZR doesn't register when you are in a rush and you end up turning the camera rather than the door handle. I do like the literal movement of handles and locks, but it doesn't really mesh well with these under pressure moments, and the inclusion of enemies in this sequel does feel a little tacked on, almost as if the critical reception of the slow pace of the first game weighed on the developers' minds. Perhaps that's why they included the option to turn these sections off and not have the monsters chase you when they see you. There are five chapters or acts as they are known and these involve both present day scenarios, parts of flashbacks and dream sequences. So whilst the gameplay never really changes, the attempt to keep locations varied whilst anchored, if you'll pardon the pun, in one set place is admirable. Gameplay is simplistic with the allure of the game coming more from the subject matter and the air of mystery and intrigue, but the inclusion of enemies feels like a bit of a backward step and it scores 13 out of 20. Controls work well most of the time, but they don't lend themselves well to the more action-oriented sections, and they score 14 out of 20. Moving on to the visuals now, and aesthetically, Layers of Fear 2 has some fantastic moments. On the one hand, you have the grandeur of the ocean liner, with all of the intricate details helping to increase this splendour. Then you have the more nightmarish moments, with a good use of black and white, screen static and light and shadow, to create a feeling of discomfort within the player. As I mentioned towards the end of the gameplay section, it is that atmosphere that sells this game for me more so than the gameplay itself. And while I don't feel Layers of Fear 2 nails this as much as the first one did, the atmosphere was so strong at times in that game it was almost suffocating, this sequel does employ some strange effects and mind tricks that are handled well. Much like in the first game, turning around can see the scenery change completely from what you just witnessed or reveal all manner of disturbing images or scenes. It's always quite shocking and can be unexpected when one of these sudden changes occur. Some are quite clever, with a noise or a flash of lights forcing you to turn around and discover such a scene, some are a little more obvious and feel a bit forced, and there is still a bit of an over-reliance on jump scares. 
I also want to give particular mention to the movement of certain objects or figures as they almost have a stop motion feel to them. It's incredibly jarring and very effective in again making the player feel uncomfortable. Performance wise then, there is the option to play with a capped frame rate of 30 frames per second or with an uncapped frame rate which will obviously sometimes reach higher. As most would expect, I found the capped frame rate to provide a much more pleasant experience with the uncapped mode fluctuating too much for my liking. When playing in capped, there were still occasional drops, usually around the time that a new area was loading and although noticeable, they were infrequent enough to not be an issue. There was however quite an odd white blur present on the edge of the screen at times when opening a door or turning the camera quickly. The image quality was impressive with everything looking sharp and no aliasing, although real time shadow maps are quite low. And shadows in general did just look a bit odd in the game I must say, which did undermine the overall world built to a small extent. Handheld mode holds up well, and whilst the text found in some of the notes could be quite small, pressing the Y button will bring up a typed version of that note which was much easier to read and alleviated the problem. When it comes to the audio, Layers of Fear 2 uses a mixture of natural background noise and eerie sounds to create a discernible level of tension. Whilst it does a good job of creating an atmosphere as standard, listening to the game whilst wearing headphones reveals that binaural audio is used and this is what really aids the experience. There are times where it feels a bit forced, such as when things like engine sounds randomly change from ear to ear, but when voices or unexplainable noises mix in with the score, it's incredibly effective. Add to that the voice talent of Candyman himself, Tony Todd, whose voice has that deep pitch and gravitas which is perfect for such a game. The stolen flame burns out. And audio is most definitely a highlight. Visuals transfer over to the Switch well for the most part, and this is definitely a solid port, minus a few minor niggles. And the atmosphere is present, although not as strong as in the original, but overall, they score 17 out of 20. Audio is top notch, with the binaural feature kicking things up a gear, and it gets 18 out of 20. Layers of Fear 2 cost £26.99, and regional equivalents are on your screen now. There is a 10% discount available from Launch up until the 31st of May, with an additional discount available for only one of Bloober Team's other games. It will take probably most people somewhere between 6-8 to eight hours to finish and a bit longer to find all of the collectibles. There are also a few different endings to find, 3 I believe in total, and these rely on choices you make at certain points in the story and on balance, value scores 14 out of 20. To conclude, Layers of Fear 2 is a tense game that whilst perhaps not quite as effective as its predecessor, still provides a creepy and unsettling psychological horror experience. The story is a little underwhelming and there is an over-reliance on jump scares still, although I do feel they are handled better this time round, and whilst the core gameplay mechanics aren't the game's strong point, usually a recipe for disaster, in this case the strong world built in terms of the disturbing imagery, which is masterfully supported by the audio, means that if you are a fan of such horror games, you'll still get a kick out of the journey, especially with the lights off and a set of headphones in. Perhaps so, just wait for a slight sale first. Layers of Fear 2 gets a switch up score of 76%. Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it, please do remember to leave a like if you did. A much better port than Blair Witch on the Switch, but not quite as effective an experience as the first Layers of Fear. A quick thank you to our Patreons for your continued support, and thank you to everybody that has subscribed to the channel in the last few weeks. If you haven't done so, please do feel free to join them with the subscribe button down below. All that's left to say then is take care, stay safe, and until next time, of course, happy gaming. One in his time plays the parts of many men. He observes the others, while the others watch him. He's expected to behave properly, wandering through worlds that aren't really there. He puts on masks and adjusts accordingly. Each mask is a character, each character a layer. Layers upon layers calling out to him. He must build the character he was meant to portray.
or lose himself completely. Submerged, tightly surrounded by lives he's never lived.